The James Beard Foundation, Chef Boot Camp for Policy and Change, trains chefs around the country to advocate for policies and practices that impact our industry and the food system. To celebrate 10 years of boot camp, we gathered alumni to discuss how the tools they learned empowered them to speak up and change their communities. Welcome everyone, it's such a thrill to have you here to talk about 10 years of boot camp and 10 years of policy advocacy and what the role that chefs play in really changing the food system. So thrilled to be sharing this table with you for a little bit and I'd love for you all to introduce yourself and tell us your name and your restaurant. I'm uh, Katie Button and um, I have two restaurants in Asheville, North Carolina, Curate and uh, La Bodega by Curate. Very nice. I'm Tiffany Derry, and I am the chef and owner of Root Southern Table in Farmer's Branch, which is Dallas, the suburbs, and uh, Plano, Texas, and Austin, Texas for Root Chicken Shack. I'm Rick Bayless. Um, I own a bunch of restaurants in Chicago, and um, we call it the Frontera Group after the very first of the restaurants that we established here. My name is Hugo Ortega, and I'm with H-Town Restaurant Group, and thank you so much for inviting me. Um, I'm Greg Collier, and I'm chef and owner of a Bay Haven Restaurant Group. My wife, Sabrina, and one of the co-founders of Bay Haven Food and Wine Festival in Charlotte, North Carolina. Welcome, everyone. So whoever wants to take it first, what difference has a boot camp made in your life? You know, as a black chef, I've always just tried to figure out what I could do for my community. Um, and I think there's so many different things that uh, underserved communities deal with. So I didn't know what to, what I'm supposed to be doing, how am I supposed to um, handle all these things. But I think going to boot camp kind of gave me a focus. That's the first time I really heard the word uh, food desert. And once I really understand about food desert and what No Kid Hungry does, I kind of was like, oh, that's the thing. That's the thing right there, food and insecurity. There's so much change and good that needs mm -hmm. to happen in the world that you find that thing like you did with yeah. the food desert piece. You find that thing yeah. that sparks you and inspires you. And then that's your drive and fire to make change happen. What made you want to attend? What was the, yes, I'm, I'm taking that trip. I think, man, for me, I just, <laughs> I'm be honest, I didn't know it was policy involved. I just knew it was shifts <laughs> and I knew we were not going to be at work. And I was like, <laughs> I was like, man, sign me up for this. And if they're going to take me on this trip, I want to do it. I wanted to go because I'm naturally curious. <laughs> and so I love learning things. And I wanted to spend a few days with people that were very deeply into the political side of things, creating policy and all that sort of thing. The sharing of the information was yeah. fantastic. It was fantastic. You know, you, you, you could come and say, you know, I'm thinking about doing this and there's someone else at the boot camp who's done it or has the yeah. experience. And now all of a sudden there's this synergy that's happening that's very hard to describe. It was just super dope and I think I left not only with like a breadth of information and knowledge, but I left with friends and people I've done dinners with and people I plan to do dinners with later on. So it was just a great experience. Some of you have mentioned that you know you were not do really doing advocacy before and I think for a lot of chefs you may not have been doing advocacy in February 2020, but by March 2020 you certainly were. Katie, let's start with you because you were very early and very heavily uh, all over Instagram. I remember seeing very powerful videos of you advocating for the industry. So what, what is some of the work that you did and how did that feel for you to be advocating so powerfully? It felt um, like the only thing that I had control over and could do in the moment. And so it, it just was this moment of like, we have to do this, otherwise everything goes away. And that was really powerful. But really looking at what um, we had learned at the boot camp, it's harnessing the power of being a chef and a restaurant owner and starting to understand that you have connections with the public. And then also you have the whole connection to the supply chain, all of the food, people that you purchase from, the farmers, they also love and depend on the restaurant industry. And a lot of people do think about the restaurant industry in terms of, you know, big chain fast food places and everything. But no, the real, the reality of the restaurant industry is it's all of these individual restaurants, a lot of mom pa owned places that really are contributing so much to their neighborhoods. It definitely changed the industry forever, I think. It also make us 
realize how fragile it is. Many of you mentioned your daily life, and then the next day you have to fight for, I mean, at that point we have around 400 employees, and today we have around 180. Yeah. So we regroup. It, is, it was pretty difficult, you know, as true for all of us. You've all made changes at the individual level, right? But is there also um, an opportunity and have you worked for changes at the leg legislative level, right? Are you still having this conversation with lawmakers? Are you trying to do systematic change? Something wonderful happened um, in Texas. I think they allow us to sell wine, right? Sure, yes, that's a goal. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yay, we to go that cocktails that life changing right yeah. there. Yeah. 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 <laughs> that was we, a little rope. We, <laughs> we got that here in Chicago as well. Which is that, that, yeah. that definitely yeah. helped, right? Yes, so. it was a big help. I'm ready to begin advocating for change in uh, tipping policies and um, uh, you know minimum wage rates and all of that. It's beginning to feel like time to start heading back, knocking on some of those doors. I'm with you. Uh, healthcare. Healthcare, <laughs> healthcare. yes. Oh my that gosh. to me is where we've got to start. There's no reason that the restaurant industry should be so different than other industries. Right. And the, we just need, we need healthcare. What's one thing you would say to someone who, you know, has not gone through boot camp, might not get through a boot camp, to get the courage and the confidence to call their, lo their lawmaker, their, their legislature? I think it's important for people who are kind of worried or afraid to kind of reach out to these people. We're community leaders in all our communities. They have a responsibility to us to make sure we have what we need so we can continue representing these communities. If we don't have these restaurants, how will we be able to do that? Yeah, I mean, especially when they're when they're up for election. After they're elected, we need to hold their feet to the fire. It's We, we need to hold them accountable. Um, and we just need to be bold in it, you know, and stop with the, you know, I don't know, I'm just one. No, we are important, we matter. Our, our businesses matter and our businesses serve so many. All right, here we go, ready me? We're celebrating 10 years of boot camp and you know, what you guys were mentioning, uh, when you went into boot camp, you didn't necessarily understand what you could do with the power that you have as chefs. What should boot camp be for the next 10 years? What is the next stage of that? I will just start by saying that there's not enough chefs that have been to boot camp, just the way it is. <laughs> that I think all of us experience something really profound that just needs to be available to a lot more chefs because with that experience, they will change in ways that will we will we will resonate in their communities. Give them the opportunity to my coworkers to like giving the opportunity to them to understand, you know, that there's more of cooking, you know, it's like uh, setting the table for them to to become I don't know, maybe the James, the next James Beer or something like that. <laughs> so um, I think it's very important to show them the path. Yeah. Yeah. Loved every minute of uh, boot camp, but um, maybe a second level to it as well, or a continuance in some way for those that have gotten started and maybe those who did it many years ago and uh, maybe a refresher course. And then also, you know, setting up those meetings and keeping everyone engaged um, in their in their local areas. Okay, last question um, for the next generation of boot campers. What is the one piece of advice you would tell someone who will be at the next boot camp? Ask a lot of questions. Ask a lot of questions. Yes, definitely. You know, Don't be afraid to go as yourself. Don't go with preconceived ideas. Go with an open mind. I mean, y'all just said two of the ones in my head. Be open, definitely ask questions, but also it's okay to not know. Almost everyone sitting at that table with you has no clue as well. What's going on? Some are just looking like they know, you know, and so it's okay. Yeah, and uh, think about what thing resonates most with you. It doesn't have to be the things that other people are talking about at the boot camp. It's finding that, that thing that connects with you that oftentimes has to do with our upbringing and so many other parts of our individuality. 
Thank you all so very much. You embody change, you embody leadership, you embody excellence in so many ways. And it's such an honor that you also are Bootcamp alum. So yes, yes, thank you yes, very yes. much.